Good morning. morning. How is everybody? Got a smile. I'm checking. (laughs) Do we have any announcements? I don't know, but are there announcements? Yes, right. (laughs) Dennis Dennis had a birthday last week. You forgot how. (laughs) So, should we sing happy birthday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's sing happy birthday. Oh, 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 one second. So Dennis had a birthday and your grandpa had a birthday? And you're... <laughs> Since I haven't met everybody, what's your grandpa's name? <laughs> That's Virgil. Virgil? So we're going to sing happy birthday to Dennis and Virgil? We'll go alphabetical order. We'll put them both together. Dennis and... <laughs> okay. <laughs> You guys are really lucky because we might have made you stand on the seat and put a sombrero on and had maracas and sing, you know. <laughs> Other announcements? We got one here, then we got one. So, the, good morning, everybody. The council has uh, re looked at everything with uh, CDC guidelines and other. Uh, supporting um, governing uh, offices that we look at for um, the COVID regulations. And um, we have uh, now decided that masks are not encouraged or required by uh, the congregation, for the congregation uh, for church events because the CDC now has us at a medium risk and that is no longer a recommendation for our area. So I just wanted to update everybody. Jan will also send out an email to update everyone else. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. In the event some of you didn't see, uh, at Seagull Community, The high school will once again be inviting all the Otsego community senior citizens to a free dinner and musical. This year, the students will be performing The Little Mermaid. Um, What you need to do is the dinner will start at 5.30 and that will be on, oh my goodness, March 30th. And then the show is at 6.30. You may call the high school, or not the high school, I apologize the um, central office and let Lisa Austin know if you are interested. And it's for the Otsego Senior Citizens and it is a free meal and a free musical for you. So anyone within our congregation too, or I would think surrounding area, is also invited. Other announcements?
Thank you. <laughs> it's good to know. Well, thank you. Any other announcements? I think uh, this week starts Ash Wednesday, right? So Ash Wednesday service here, and then weekly services on Wednesdays. I noticed, and, and I'm going to actually try to come. You want? To... This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and the service will be at 6 45. Thank you. So mark your calendars for that. I know when I was pastor at uh, East Christian, or I mean over to uh, New Hope in Holland for many, many years, our Wednesday night services, we did a similar thing, but we had bread and soup dinners, and they were some of the most meaningful services, at least to me as, as pastor, uh, of, the, of the whole year. So, so hopefully we'll see you here. Any others? Well, if not, then the peace of Christ be with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things that we have done and the things that we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. And sing together in our gathering hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do and you shall anoint for me the one whom I named to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to John, chapter 9, 1 through 41. As he walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Salome, which means sent. Then he went and he washed and he came back and he was able to see. And the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it's someone like him. And he kept saying, I am the man. But they kept saying, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus, made mud, spread it in my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed, and I received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought him to the Pharisee, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. And so the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened, and he said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. And they asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? Or, or how then does he see? And his parents answered, We know that this is our son, and we know that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, for he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said, said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus is the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. And therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. And so for the second time they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, 
now I see. And they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered, I have already told you, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And then they answered him, You were born entirely in sins and are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard them near him heard this and said to him, Surely we're not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sins remain. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, do we have some children? Oh, we have a children's choir that's going to sing, right? Okay. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs>
I can't follow that. That's like you guys just dropped the mic, you know? It's like, which, which is a good thing. That means it did so good, nobody can follow it. Wow, I'd hate to be the soloist, but <laughs> you'll do great. <laughs> well, let me come out here and sit this thing down. You know, what you just did is really, hi there, buddy, <laughs> is really important. And it fits right in what I was going to tell you. And it's just like what you did singing. There was once a man, and he was a builder. And he built, he carved out beautiful things. And he was asked to build big pillars. You know what pillars are? They help hold up roofs. You know what a pillar is? Yeah, what is it? It's something that holds up roof. You're absolutely right. And so this man, he was building a pillar. And at the very top of the pillar, he wanted to have a real fancy design so it looked pretty. But it was going to be way in the air so not many people would see it. But nobody might see it. And so he spent all this time working as hard as he could to make that pretty design. And people kept saying to him, what are you? Why are you spending all that time working on that design that no one will see? And he said, I'm working on it because two people will see it. I will see it so I'll know it's good. And God will see it. So God will know I put my best into it. And that's what's important to me. And when you practice singing and you work on a song and you sing as beautiful as that, you know you did your best. Everybody out here enjoyed it because they know it was beautiful and God knows it was beautiful. And he really loves, God really loves that. I shouldn't say he, God really loves that. So always do your best. Even if you're getting called by the other horses. And, <laughs> Okay? Well, let's say a prayer. Lord God, we help us, ask that you help us always do our best in everything we do, whether it's singing or whether it's building or whether it's just being someone's friend. Help us be the best we can be. In your name, amen. Have a great Sunday, you guys, and a great week, okay? Okay? <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs>
Man, another mic drop. I might as well just, you know. <laughs> that was very nice. Thank you. Wait a minute. Let me get rearranged here. I sat up here because I didn't know if the, the choir was going to come up here and sit down. But apparently no one wanted to be, be up here with us. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, as I so often do, I want to tell you a story. There were two men. Both of them were seriously ill. Both of them were in the same hospital room. One man was allowed to sit up in his bed for an hour each afternoon to drain fluid from his lungs. His bed was next to the only window in the room. And the other man, or the other man had to spend all of his time flat on his back, flat on his back just looking at the ceiling. And so the men became friends. They would talk for hours. They spoke about their wives. They spoke about their families. They spoke about their jobs and their military service, where they went on vacation. Anything you can imagine, these men talked about. And every afternoon, when the man whose bed was right by the window was able to set up, he would pass the time by describing to his roommate all the things that he could see out of that window. The man in the other bed began to live for those one hour periods of time where his world would be broadened and enlivened by all the activity and color of the world right outside. Now the window overlooked a beautiful park with a lovely lake Ducks and geese, swans, they swam and played in the water while children sailed their model boats. Young lovers walked arm in arm through tons and tons of beautiful flowers, all the colors in the rainbow, and grand old trees graced the landscape right outside. And there was a wonderful view of the steady skyline way in the distance. And as the man by the window described all of this in exquisite detail, the man on the other side of the room would close his eyes and just imagine the picturesque scene. One warm afternoon, the man by the window described a parade that was going by. Now, although the other man couldn't hear the band, he could see it in his mind's eyes as the gentleman by the window portrayed it in very descriptive words. Days passed, weeks passed, time went on. And one morning, the day nurse arrived to bring water for their baths, only to find the lifeless body of the man by the window who had passed away peacefully in his sleep during the night. As soon as... Uh, she was done feeling sad and struggling with that loss. She called the attendants and she asked them to take the body away. And as soon as it seemed appropriate, the other man asked if he could be moved next to the window. The nurse was happy to make the switch and after making sure that he was comfortable, she left him alone. Slowly, painfully, he propped himself up, up on one elbow to take his first look outside. Finally, he would have the joy of seeing this for himself. He strained to slowly turn and look out the window beside the bed. It was a blank wall. That's all that was there, just a wall. And the man asked the nurse, what could have compelled his deceased roommate and friend to describe such wonderful things outside this window? And the nurse looked puzzled for a minute and then responded, well, the man was blind. He couldn't even see the wall. She thought and then she said, perhaps he just wanted to encourage you. In the story, 
from the Gospel of John, the focus in the background and the whole picture of that story is really not on the blind man gaining his sight. That's not the real message behind that story, that the blind man gained his sight. The focus is whether or not the people and the priests were blind spiritually. Do they realize who Jesus is? Are they opening their hearts and ears and minds and listening? Do they realize what this means? Or are they stuck in some archaic system of rituals and laws? Are they stuck on the healing being against something in the law that you shouldn't work on the Sabbath? That's why the priests were upset and saying that Jesus was a sinner because, well, if he healed you, that was work. And you can't work on the Sabbath. It's against the law, so therefore he's a sinner. Are we blind when we hear this story? Do we focus only on the fact that this blind man gained his sight? And I think a lot of us do. I think a lot of times when that story is presented or read, when I pull it out of the lectionary when you preach from, a lot of times it's just the healing and then it jumps forward to the man saying, yes, I'll worship you, you're the son of man. It jumps around. But it's not just about that miracle. It's about so much more. Do we focus on that bigger picture when we hear the story? Just as with the man's blindness in John's story, we can get caught up in those little microcosms of the world around us and of other things that we read and miss the wider picture missed the big picture. In his book of a generation ago, Who Needs God? Rabbi Harold Kushner wrote, religion is not primarily a set of beliefs, a collection of prayers, or a series of rituals. Religion is first and foremost a way of seeing. It can't change the facts about the world that we live in, but it can change the way we see those facts. And that in itself can often make a difference. Now in the story I told you of the two men sharing the hospital room, our focus may have been on, in fact when I first read it it was, our focus may have been on the sadness of the death of the one man and the joy that the other could finally get by and see out the window. But it wasn't on the wider picture of compassion that that one man had. Compassion that led that one man, even though he was blind, to see the world in a beautiful, vibrant way and to share this, giving the other strength to survive. You know, that man, that blind man, could not have described that world in that beautiful of a way unless that's the way he actually saw the world. With all its struggles, with all its war, with all its everything, to see beyond that and to see the beauty that is even there in the world around us. And he led him to share what he saw to give this man strength to survive. As Kushner said, this man couldn't change the facts, but it's the way that he saw the facts spiritually that made all the difference in the world. Jesus came to share our walk with us. His teachings opened our hearts and our minds and helped us to see things in a different way, giving us spiritual sight. He comes as a sign of that big picture of healing, that real healing that God is working and bringing within the world. So, who is this Jesus? Is Jesus the Son of God? Is Jesus 
the divine messenger? Is Jesus the physician of our soul? Or, as the priests thought, was he just another sinner among us, taunting us with false promises? Those who trust Christ may not be able to explain it, but neither do they still stumble in the darkness any longer. Would you join me in prayer? Lord God, we come to you this morning. We open our hearts. We open our minds. And we ask that you touch us because deep within, we are troubled. We are troubled at the events in the world with war, with worry. Help us to see beyond that. Spiritually see what's happening. As individuals and countries work together to lift their voices and say we will support you to another country under siege. Help us to see that even in the midst of smoke, even in the midst of all that's happening around us, there is the blue of the sky above. There is the peace and the stillness of a forest glade somewhere showing that you are still here and that we are still within you. Help us to see how we can reach out and support each other, to share with each other the beauty that we see within the world. And if we don't see beauty in the world, open our eyes so that we can. All this we ask in your name. Amen. And in that spirit, I invite our adult choir to come up to present, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. Let's use the formation that we used last time. <laughs>
Let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. And together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sand shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. You love justice and establish equity. Strengthen the leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal those who are in distress. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassion and hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace, Hear our be with the oppressed people of Ukraine. We pray for your blessing and your protection upon them and bring peace to the region. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Blessed are they who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. God of grace, since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our offering.
Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Gathered at the Lord's table, we hear these familiar words. In the night in which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. He blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Take and eat. It's given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink, saying... This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Gathered now in one Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come to God's table. There is place for you, and there is enough for all. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. May this holy and precious body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God who leads us in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name. Bless your going and your coming, today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's stand and sing our sending hymn.
with Christ into a weary world and share the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen.